transmissions. When we take a look at our experience, what do we really see? We see a series of events, a series of happenings. It looks like as if the events are coming from future and they are going into the past. What we see is only impermanence. We do not see anything at all which lasts even for a while. There are some things which uh, seem to be permanent, but when we observe carefully, they are only very slowly changing. Some things, they change very, very fast. And some things are so fast that we do not even perceive them. The events themselves, they are not very clearly distinguished from each other. There is a continuous flow of the events. It's continuous change. This is what we call as the flow of time. Time is something in which the events happen. It is a dimension which exists, which is real. And everything happens in this dimension of the time. This is the commonly held belief and nobody really questions it. So let us do that because it is our job to question everything. On the path of knowledge, we do not do anything else. How do we know that there is a past? How do we know that there is a future from where the events are coming and the past to where the events are going? And the answer is simple. We know the past because I remember what happened yesterday or last year or 10 years ago. And we also have the history books and very big authorities to tell us that something happened in distant past when you were not even born. And there are buildings and ruins that are the evidence of things that happened in past. This is how we know that there is a past. How do we know that there is a future? That is slightly tricky, isn't it? We know it because we can estimate it. We can predict that such and such event will happen and it usually happens. We can say that the sun will come up tomorrow. And it does. That is, that is how we know that there is a future from where the sun appeared. So for a common man, the ideas of future and past are a reality. When we try to find an evidence of the past, we need to rely on our memory. If we cannot recall, we won't be able to say it with certainty that there was a past. Similarly, for future, we need to rely on our predictive ability, which is again dependent on the memory because we can extrapolate only that, which is already in our memory. We know that an event will happen tomorrow because there is a memory of it happening every day. So it is our memory that tells us about the past and the future. What about the present? Well, we do, do not really need any evidence for the present because present is here and now in front of us. 
and it looks like that it's not really dependent on the memory because I can see the things happening in front of me. So it looks like that we found an experience, an evidence for existence of future, present and past. And they are flowing, they are dynamic. When we try to experience the past, we experience our memory. We rely on our memory. When we try to experience the future, we again rely on our memory and our predictive ability. When we try to see the present, we do not really need the memory. It seems that time has some kind of deep connection to memory. In fact, when somebody asks me what happened yesterday, that is, when I want to access the past, I access my memories. When somebody asks me what is going to happen in future, I access my memories and extrapolate them into the future. So it seems there is a direct relation of time and memory. So we know the past as a memory, we know the future as a memory. All we can experience is the memory. We do not really experience a past. We do not obviously experience a future. We experience only the present. And the past and future are derived out of our memory. And when do we experience the memory? We experience it in present, obviously. There is no other time where the memories can be experienced. Isn't it amazing that something which is considered so fundamental, a dimension of reality, there is no experience of it. The only experience that there is, is of the present in terms of time. When I ask, what is really flowing from future to past? Then probably the answer is that the events are flowing. If you want a very logical and rational answer, then it is not really satisfactory to answer it like this. Because what is an event? It is merely a change. Events cannot flow. Events are just concepts. Change happens. And that is what we call as a flow of events. In fact, there is no such thing as an event. There is no boundary between one change and the other change. It is continuous change. There are no events. So what is really happening is change. And that is what we call as a flow of event. So it is the change that is happening. It becomes a really indirect to say that time is flowing. And the events are static things in time that come one after the other in chunks. They are coming obviously from the future where there is potential for the event to be there. They appear in present and they go and get lost somewhere in the past. It seems like a magical story when you... <laughs> When you take a look at it, does it make any sense? Because all I see is a continuous series of changes. Now all I see is my memory of it. I do not see a dimension which has these three directions, future, present and past. The memory is recalled in present. The anticipation or prediction or estimation is done in present. The future appears as imagination in present. It is also a change. Recall of the memory is also a change. It is also an event. All these things, all these experiences are happening in present. Since they are changing, 
we call it a flow and probably the correct word is impermanence because flow demands something to flow but we do not see anything that is flowing it is only a concept so impermanence is a better word to describe our experiences what are we really experiencing we are experiencing a memory when we say we have an experience of the time that is all there is we have never experienced time we have never experienced past we have never experienced future the experience of the present is happening now the experience of the past in terms of memories is happening now and the experience of the future is nothing but a play in the memory that is also happening now have we ever experienced anything except this now then why do we say that there is a future and why do we say that there is a past if you pay attention these are concepts in our mind which means that the future and past are concepts that our mind created what are we really experiencing in present is memory and the processes in the memory the activity of the memory memorizing recalling imagining this is mind what we are experiencing is mind the events they are perceptions right now you are perceiving me that means the senses are giving us an experience of perception an experience of something changing that is again mind because without mind there cannot be perception the mind is creating them from the changes the pulses or the signals that are being that are being received from the senses it is also happening now so the right the experience that i am having now right now is totally of the mind the past is mind the future is mind the present the changing perceptions is also mind all we experience is the mind therefore we say that all that exists is a mind what kind of mind perpetually changing mind the change is happening in present the past is derived out of memory the future is derived out of imaginations out of our past experience the future is computed we have never really experienced time this existence is timeless but some people are going to say no the science has proven that there is time look there is a clock here the clock is telling me the time <laughs> the seasons happen the sun happens moon happens it happens very very accurately that means time is flowing when you take a look at the clock all you see is change that is happening in present then your conditioning says that look this is time when you see the seasons when you see the sun and moon and rotations of different kinds that are very very regular your mind tells you that look this is time this is how it happened in the past and this is how it's going to happen in the future and what is happening is a very regular change that regular change can be used to measure how many events have passed how many things have happened and what is the speed of that change so we use one change to measure the other change we use a regular change to compare the somewhat irregular changes that is what you call measurement of time measurement of time is nothing but a measurement of change in terms of very regular changes how do we know that things are changing regularly 
again memory we saw it we saw them change very very regularly if you can read the memory like a roll of paper you will find that the changes are mostly random but there are some changes there are some events that kind of happen in pulses very regular waves happen the mind has this extraordinary ability to detect regular change but it does not detect it so accurately but it knows that this something is happening very regularly so we have the instruments that are more rule bound and they register the regular change much better than the mind that is what you call as time measurement devices or clocks what are they registering is a regular change if suddenly all the clocks in the world they started changing irregularly you will lose track of all the time the time is not going to make any sense then so we have a definition here actually very good definition that uh, time is a measurement of change regular change can be used to measure the passing events the impermanence just like a fixed length of uh, let's say stick can be used to measure any distance so we can use a fixed length of change to measure other changes this is the measurement of time i have seen many definitions of the time and they are all circular <laughs> even the so called expert definition from the big authorities it's all circular they are trying to define the time in terms of time or in terms of motion or in terms of a duration past or present feelings and so on we never feel the time we feel only the present that is our direct experience and everything else is derived out of this experience and they are all concepts there is there is nothing solid in our experience that looks like flow of time there is no past there is no future this is how we experience an existence the existence is pure presence it is it was not and it will not be it is that's all the was and will are creation of the mind this is your experience right now right here it is not an an armchair philosophy it is not science or it is not some kind of religious blind belief it is our experience right now right here this is what you are experiencing and it is just our conditioning that we believe all these things about time and events and changes changes do not happen in time the change is more fundamental than time time is now derived out of change that happened and there you can actually find a big hole in this argument that there is no time you can say but look there is change and you have defined time in terms of change and change is nothing but time so it is also a circular definition isn't it think about it change is not defined in terms of time that is a not so accurate way to define the change change is defined in terms of memory if there were no memory i won't be able to see any change because change is a comparison that happens in the mind it is not that there is a change that is happening it is an experience that is present and there is a memory of it which is also present the experience gets compared with the memory with the contents of the mind and if something similar is found in the mind we say that change has happened that gives us an illusion of change that gives us an illusion of the experience being dynamic change is not happening in time time is not derived out of change time has no existence it is a concept 
change is our experience and that is based on memories in other words it is mind only change is mind only it is really unbelievable isn't it and many of you won't believe me it may look like a play of words and actually i do, do not have that kind of sophisticated vocabulary philosophical vocabulary to express all these things i see and i say that's all i do <laughs> very simple i just use a very nice trick i kick out all of my conditioning before i see and i don't let my conditioning to affect when i say that's all i've learned that that this little trick enables me to see the things as they are instead of seeing through seeing them through the colored glasses of our conditioning which is stuffed in our minds in our memories by the society by the ignorant people by the deluded people that are around us everywhere so i request you to do the same and see if you see the same thing that i see and to help in this seeing i'll show you a little experiment which anybody can do it does not take a thousand million dollar lab to to do this kind of experiment sometimes i call it um, gradual destruction of memories but don't worry you don't need to really destroy your memories or cut down your brain or you know manipulate your mind or take some drugs or <laughs> do anything disgusting like that just imagine your mind will see it it goes like this that uh, you imagine that you do not remember anything which is more than 10 years old you know only the last 10 years that's all you know because we do not experience any memories beyond 10 years we cannot say anything about the experience that happened we can say at most i don't remember now cut down the memories to one year only and imagine that you do not remember anything beyond one year from now did anything really happen in your life were you born did you go to school did you marry or things like that important events did they really happen you can still say i don't remember it but probably things happened other people remember it but yes you remember everything in the last one year and you are very confident that these things happened the past is still here cut it down to last one day only you do not remember what happened beyond yesterday how was your life what really happened because you have only yesterday to recall it will become very very difficult for you to even believe that you existed uh, you existed beyond yesterday now you won't be able to believe even the other people because you do not have any references to things the concepts that that they are saying somebody is telling you that you were born and you do not have any idea of what it means to be born you have never seen a birth because only one day's memory is there people tell you that your name is this and that and you, you live here but you do not know really you are fully conscious you are fully intelligent you are the same person that you were but now you are experiencing almost timelessness that exists only for one day and you keep forgetting whatever happens beyond 24 hours your memory has this let us say defect now cut it down to last one hour and now you don't even know the languages <laughs> now you do, don't know how to talk how to eat nothing you're like a baby infant just experiencing things there is no past almost no past 
because in one hour the the changes do not make enough impressions on the memory you can't include anything but you will have a vague idea that something is happening there is light there is sound but you will not know what these things are cut down your memory to last 1 minute only and you won't be able to make any sense of objects you won't be able to make any sense of sounds perceptions pains pleasures you will forget the body because you see the body and it's gone in one minute you will not know who you are what you are memory <laughs> how crucial it is for your existence now cut it down to last 1 second and you will just be reduced to fuzz of experiences there is nothing there really nothing really changes enough in 1 second you will sit there like a rock the mind cannot even start moving your hands and feet because it does not know how to move the body cut it down to a millisecond let us say it is extreme you won't be able to imagine it i'm pretty sure but when you go into the depths of it when you use your rational logical abilities to find out what can happen if my memory is only of 1 millisecond and i highly recommend that you do that you will find that perception vanishes there won't be any perception because perception depends on our short term memory what is now being perceived is being compared with your immediate memory my last word needs to go into the memory for this next word to make any sense <laughs> let us say you are watching a movie you are the in the movie is going at 24 frames per second the last frame needs to be committed to memory in order for the current frame to be meaningful otherwise it will be a random change on the screen so we see that the present is also memory if you say the present is 1 2 milliseconds in duration it is nothing but past it is also memory cut down the memory to zero and all of your experience will simply disappear this is a thought experiment but it will make you think it is not totally imaginary because you can clearly see that without memory there is no experience the activity of the memory is nothing but mind the change in memory the perceptions the recalls the past the future the, the emotions that we experience even the present that we think is a short duration of time which is happening now because we cannot really imagine a now we cannot really imagine timelessness because in certain sense we cannot experience the timelessness we know there is timelessness because everything else is just memory everything else is just concepts that are derived out of memory and conditioning these ideas we know that there is timelessness but we won't be able to experience it all we experience is the mind the activity of the memories there is all the mind is mind is the process in memories without memories there cannot be any process in the mind what is it really going to process if there is nothing in the memory that's why i say all we experience is the mind all the experience is the experience of the mind this is your direct knowledge just now you found it out of course you will have many many doubts but i suggest keep doing the experiments keep trying to find a reality that is independent of memories and minds and your concepts names and forms perceptions all subjective stuff isn't it <laughs> where is your objective reality where is the dimension of time where is past and present when there is no mind there is nothing like this
So we say that all the experiences being created by the mind is all an illusion created by the mind. Nothing is really happening. There is no past. There is no present also. It is not ex really possible to experience the present also without memory or without the mind. And of course, there is no future. It is all an illusion. It is all Maya. It is all mind created. Don't you see this? Isn't this your direct experience? The existence is timelessness, yes. But it cannot be experienced. <laughs> that which we experience is not real. That which cannot be experienced is the reality, is the truth. What is really real then? What really exists? Isn't that fascinating question? The answer is very simple. There has to be something which is registering the memories. There has to be something which is registering the change. There has to be something which experiences. Even if it is an illusion, there has to be something which is experiencing the illusion. What is it? No, it cannot be experienced as an experience. Because then it will become false. And you will be left with the question that who is experiencing the experiencer? So that which cannot be experienced is the reality. That which is experiencing is the reality. That is the only truth. That is the only thing that is not changing. Because if it changed, then what experience that change? If it changed, it must go into the memory. Then it becomes a memory. That it, then it becomes a mental process. What is it that is not a mental process? What is it that is above the mind? That is beyond the mind? That is behind all experiences in our mind created? That is the only reality and it is known by many names as you know, but probably you never encountered it, probably you never met it because it is you. You are the one who is the experiencer. You are not an experience. The bodies, they come and go. They are in memory just like you saw. The mental activities, they come and go. All the people, they come and go. Anything that can be experienced is impermanence. It comes and it goes. Don't worry about where, from where it comes and where it goes. There is no such thing. There is no where in existence. There is only here. There is only now. There is no when. These questions, they, these concepts, they do not apply to existence. And I am that existence. I am the one that is existing while everything comes and goes. I stay. Not as this body, not as this mind, not as any other metaphysical structure. They all are impermanent. They are, they are all change. They are all being registered by some kind of memory. And they are all illusory. That which experiences all these illusions is not illusory. And I am that because I remain while everything changes. And you can call it the existence. Existence remains while things in the existence change. The existence is actually nothing. It is empty because it cannot be seen. <laughs> it's just like empty space. It cannot be seen. It is just like light. The light also cannot be seen. When, it, the, when the light reflects and is registered by a mind, senses, memory, then we say, oh, it exists, it is there. Similarly, it is not possible to know that which is unless it reflects in the form of a change. 
unless it appears in the form of an appearance. That which is, is the only one that is appearing. So I am that which is and I am the one that is appearing to myself. And not only I am the experiencer, I am also the experience. Without the memory, without the mind, this reflection of myself will not be there and I won't be able to know my own existence. Now you know. <laughs> now, you do not, now you know the reason for an existence to, to be there and the reason for it being illusory, passing, creation of the mind. There is no wonder that when we start looking for the most fundamental things in our experience, such as time, we do not find anything else except myself. There is no wonder that all the equations of the physics, they are time symmetric. They do not show an entity called time. They do not show a dimension called time. An electron going forward in time is only a positron going backward in time. Is there an electron? Is there an, is there an positron that is defined by the time? No, the same thing appearing in different formats. When you so in simply reverse the equations of physics, the physics, the physical things are not happening in time. No experiments can prove the existence of the time. All they give rise to are paradoxes because they arise out of your false belief in the reality of the time. I leave you as a homework to study all the time paradoxes. You will find that they point to the truth that there is no time. It has implications. It means that I am eternal. I am a timeless being. I am not an experience that comes and goes. But it also means that my ideas about myself were totally wrong because I always considered myself as that which can be experienced, which everybody is experiencing. I am that. Otherwise, how do people know that I exist? I need somebody to tell me that I exist. Isn't that illogical? <laughs> You tell people you exist and they tell you that you exist. What are they telling each other is that illusions exist. There is only one thing that exists and it is the only thing. It is the existence itself. One and only. Nobody else exists. Everything exists in the existence. On the screen of this conscious, knowing, aware existence. Does that mean that I am immortal? The word immortality applies only to a structure. If a structure can be seen in past, through the present and can be predicted to exist in the future, we can say that it is immortal. But I am not immortal. I am eternal. I am timeless. There is no guarantee that the immortality will stay. But it is guaranteed that I am the eternal and the eternity is going to stay because eternity is all there is. It is not defined by time. Eternity is not a very big chunk of time. It is not infinite time. These are all wrong notions. These are illogical, irrational concepts. Eternity is timelessness, which is your current direct experience. I am already eternal. I am the only when. I am appearing in various forms, including this form right now, right here, that you are perceiving. Including that form there, including that form here, from a blade of grass to the huge galaxies, 
they are all my forms and they are eternal they keep changing in forms does not really concern me i know i am not changing change is an illusion again there is no change nothing is changing and therefore nothing is happening because something needs to change in order to call it a happening in order to call it an event since there is nothing that is changing we say that nothing is really happening and there is nothing really that exists except emptiness the shunyata that is self effulgent that lights itself <laughs> that appears as many things it is not really many things it is an illusion it is an appearance only nothing is really appearing as many things that solves the question that you know, how can one thing appear as many things what is the process which divides the one into many look at your own experience is it many <laughs> isn't this division done by the mind no mind no many the only there is only this eternal presence timeless presence and i am that thank you very much for listening asito